Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about drawing backgrounds, um, some of my top tips, things that have helped me improve my backgrounds and then also some thoughts that you may want to consider and some thoughts that may help you make drawing backgrounds more enjoyable. Um, yeah, at the end of this video I have included a short clip of Mila, so stay tuned for that. That's a super cute clip that my boyfriend took today and I wanted to share that with you guys. My Crystal Gazer patrons will get this as an exclusive print sent to them um, at the beginning of next month. And my other patrons will also get this as a PSD um, to go through the layers and also as a coloring page because I do think it's very therapeutic to color this in. Let's get into the video. Yeah, the drawing that you see me do is a drawing of Nubia, the character I've been drawing during all of the days of Inktober so far. And yeah, she's the OC I made for the My Witch Junior OC challenge that I'm hosting with uh, Betvi on Instagram right now. And the prompt list is designed to kind of get to know your character more through the prompt. And um, I've been really falling in love with her and felt like I wanted to do a more elaborated illustration of a room, of her room. And um, yeah, um, and also talk about backgrounds because I've been lately doing a lot more background work than I've ever done before. And I've been really enjoying it and have a few things to share with you guys. So yeah. Let's, let's get right into that. Um, I have some preliminary sketches that I did for this illustration that I'm going to pull in right now. And you can see whenever I do any kind of illustration that's more elaborated, I do prep myself for it and collect ideas. What kind of illustration do I want to do? And I can really recommend doing some kind of sketches before you draw any room just to kind of map out where you want the camera to be placed and um, how you want the shot to be composed where you want your person to be and yeah in case you are placing a person into that background and um, but that's what i kind of want to focus on for this video um yeah do some sketches um what's also very important is use reference. You wouldn't really start drawing something that you haven't drawn before really or haven't, don't have a lot of experience without reference. So I can recommend getting some kind of reference from a room, maybe take a picture of your own room in a similar angle or something or go on Pinterest and see what types of rooms you enjoy and what types of rooms would fit your character. And uh, yeah, just use them as inspiration and kind of see how are the lines in a room, if that makes sense. So how uh, does the perspective really look in a room and not just how you think it looks. Um, when I thought of this drawing, I didn't just think, oh, okay, let's put Nubia in a cute pose into the room. Um, I think it's very important to have the character interact with the room. So that's why I made her be in front of the mirror in the morning and kind of doing her hair up and yeah interacting with the room in that way she's also not the center of the room she's in the room and does th something and not just standing there and then the room behind her i think that's something very helpful and something that can make you enjoy drawing the room more because it's not just something in the background to fill the empty space but something the character is interacting with and something you have to kind of build around her and when you have done your sketches, I think it's very important when you go into digital or onto your final canvas um, that you start very simple. Start with the main lines where you want the corner to be, if you have a corner and so on. Just very rough and something else that um, may be surprising for some people, don't focus too much on perspective. Um, when I did that in the past, that just ruined the image for me and um, it was annoying to do and also made it look very constructed and fake. And ever since I stopped worrying about perspective, I just enjoyed drawing backgrounds so much more and they they started looking more natural and actually more like a background and not like, yeah, um, a constructed piece from a math exam or something I don't know so don't worry too much about pers perspective um, 
look at pictures of rooms, see how they behave in certain angles and you should understand how perspective works in general and then just use it and not use too many straight lines. Keep it very organic because you want the character and the environment to both be kind of made of the same material. So you want both to be made of natural lines. Um, your if your character isn't constructed like a robot or something with very straight lines, I wouldn't do that for the background either. So because Nubia is a human, um, she is going to have a lot of round shapes and naturally I'm go also going to um, let the background have a lot of natural shapes so um, they are a unit and look like a whole illustration. And then also whenever I have very straight lines, um, I try to break them up. So with the mirror, there's a very straight line going down and I do try to break it up with Nubia or with the plant. So there aren't too many straight lines and doesn't look too constructed. Something else that I struggled with in the beginning is building the furniture from squares and shapes but then not really going out of these shapes. Um, you want them to look natural and not like boxes that are building the room. That's something yeah, I struggled with a lot in the beginning and my room just looked like a bunch of boxes next to each other and not really like a room. Um, and that, in that case, prioritize making it look good over making it correct, um, I think. Um, focus on having fun and making the room look nice in the end and not it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be correct as long as it works with the character I think um, and then yeah well when you're sketching start very simple start with a few pieces of environment and start with a few pieces of furniture maybe the first thing could be the character like I started and then build up um, with the piece of furniture the character is interacting with and then add a plan, start adding more stuff and keep it very loose. Be open to moving things around until you're satisfied and try to also have some things that are framing the shot um, and don't make it look too composed. Um, I think it's good if some things are not visible entirely and just, just hint at some things and keep it very natural and organic. As I said, look at references. Um, most Pinterest images of rooms are very composed, but if you just quickly take pictures of your own room or look in animes or something like that on movies, um, the shots look very natural because it's not too composed and some things are cut off and you can only see edges and so on. So I can really recommend trying to do that as well. Um, you should treat the room or the background like an, their own character. Um, you want everything to be unique and interesting to look at and also for you to draw. Um, if you make the room very generic and boring, um, it doesn't really, it's not very useful that you're drawing it, if that makes sense. Um, or except if you want to have a room that looks useless and weird then that's totally fine um, if that fits your character that's also cool um, but what I mean is for Nubia for example I try to add a lot of things that would fit her personality and make the room look like it's her own and also like um, and also I wanted to add some surprises for people um, if they look at the image that it's not too boring um, add some small things that you only see if you look twice onto the room and so on, you know. So when the person looks at first onto the image, it's at first just Nubia and the mirror and then they start to look somewhere else and wander to, ro to the right and see and maybe see the little shelf and then can explore the shelf and see what kind of stuff has does she have on there and what kind of person is she. So. Yeah, that's something very fun about backgrounds that has started to make me enjoy drawing them more. Then when you are actually drawing the lines for the background, I can really recommend to draw some things and when you're happy with them, lower the opacity of the layer 
make a new layer and then draw the next thing. That's something I've been doing for a while and it helps so much because you can uh, clearly see where you are right now, what layer you are on because you're only drawing on the 100% opacity layer, you know exactly what you're doing and um, you're not ac accidentally drawing plants on the same layer on top of the mirror like um, for example in my image. I did the mirror on a separate layer and then could just draw it out and just erase where the mirror wasn't supposed to be and that saves you so much time and hustle and yeah I can really recommend using the layers and the transparency for your advantage. Then let's get over to colors. Um, when you are drawing a background and you want the character to really look like they belong into the background, I can recommend trying to keep in a very simple unified color scheme. For this illustration I did use a photo for reference to kind of capture the mood that is in the picture just very loosely and dropped some colors and it's very orangey, yellowish and green and I try to keep in that color scheme and not go out a lot just to make it look very unified. So Nubia and the background are a coherent unit and they look like they belong to each other. And you can use colors to create a mood. Um, if you just use the local colors, so all the colors that are supposed to be in certain areas. For example, the bed sheets would be sky blue um, and then the floor would be brown or something um, and just use the color that they actually are. It can look very, very colorful and too extreme. You should um, consider what kind of lighting situation have I going on, how are the colors working in context and try to set a tone for everything. So if you have a blue bed sheet, for example, and you have a very orangey yellowy light, go into the greens more and go closer to the yellow so um, it looks like the bed sheets actually belong in this environment. Something that has to do with this phenomenon um, is the white point of the image. So depending on the kind of light you have, so for example if you have a bright day, it's a blue sky, the light point is going to be very bright and slightly bluish and um, a very simple white and but if you have a lighting like for example in the image that I'm showing to you right now that I'm drawing um, the lighting is very yellow orangey so the white point is going to be darker and more orange because there is less light so the white is going to be less bright and saturated um, you should maybe try to take some pictures and pick some colors, just look how the colors interact with each other and how the light affects the colors. That's actually something I've been very interested in and um, that's something that has surprised me a lot of times because in darker situations the skin turns so much darker and more saturated than it looks on the image because when all the colors are together they start to look very natural because the eyes can understand light and even in a picture or photograph they can see ah, okay this is the light situation this is the local color but if you actually pick the color it's going to be completely different and um, yeah if you see the color isolated it's going to look a lot different so that's something to keep in mind and um, make the colors look coherent you can also work with effect layers in the end to create that effect there's also something I did as well on top of choosing colors that would be more fitting. I also added effect layers like overlay layers, color balance, color and saturation sliders. So yeah, um, on top of choosing colors that I thought would be fitting, I also did those to make the color scheme look even more coherent because the more coherent the color scheme is, the more the character is going to blend into the background. Not too much, of course, we still want to see the character, but um, you know what I mean, make them look like they belong in the same world and they are of yeah, the same nature. Um, something I forgot to say is to try to keep the level of detail similar. So don't have, a extremely um, don't have an extremely detailed manga girl um, running around her room and the room just has a total of 20 lines or something. Try to have the detail similar to the person. Um, 
If you want the person to stand out more, have more contrast to the background, it does help if you use more contrast and more lines in the character than in the background. That's something that um, I've heard a lot people, I've heard people say a lot. So um, if you want the characters to stand out, just have more contrast in the character and more saturation and have the background be less saturated and with less contrast and they will naturally stand out even if the color scheme is very similar. But if you want them to blend in, something that I've tried to achieve with this illustration, for example, um, try to keep the level of detail and contrast pretty similar and then they're going to look like they belong yeah, in this situation. Also try to consider your light sources and keep them very easy to grasp. So I try to have um, a very obvious light source from the window and then also this small crystal that's on her shelf and um, but mostly the window and I think you can see that the light is going coming from there and it also affects all the shadows in the entire room. Yeah that's something to also keep in mind but that's probably something you already are keeping in mind so just something I wanted to add. Thank you so much for watching and for listening until now. Um, I know this was kind of a longer video than usual but I wanted I really wanted to share some of my tips because they have helped me tremendously in the past. I'm very curious to know how you are on the topic of backgrounds. Are you someone who draws a lot of them or are you avoiding them like me? Um, or are you only drawing backgrounds? That's also something people do and I also really like seeing really nice um, concept arty backgrounds. So that's also something I'd be curious. Um, yeah, let me know and stay tuned for the Mila um, video that's coming in the end card and also if you want to get this PSD or the exclusive print maybe check out my patreon page where I share all of these things and more and yeah um, I'm going to stop talking now thank you so so much for watching and I will be seeing you very soon in my next one bye <laughs>